I have a favorite word. It's a word that I think I've used more times in my life than any other word. It's a word that got me into trouble, but also a word that brought some success to my life. That word is why. Like when I was four years old and my mom was bringing me to a friend's house for a New Year's party and I wanted to dress up as Batman and she said, no, you can't. I asked, why? Or when my gymnastic teacher told me I could not be on the boys' soccer team, I asked why. Or my first boss in hospitality looked me straight in the eyes and said, Tess, you should not have such high ambitions for yourself. I looked back at her and asked why. I was told not to be so difficult and not to question things all the time. And guess what I responded to that? Why? Luckily, I grew up, or well, at least I grew older, and I learned not to question everything all the time, not to ask why all the time. It didn't stop my curiosity, though. It didn't stop me from asking questions to others and to myself every question, every single day I ask myself questions. Now I know that the curiosity and the question why, actually, is the biggest asset in my professional toolbox and that could not go one day without that. My name is Tess Mattisson. I am director of European marketing for Choice Hotels Europe. But as that little girl inside me still want to have that superhero name, you all can call me the Y woman. <laughs> I work for Choice Hotels International. Uh, we are a um, global franchisor with 6,800 hotels all over the world. The vast majority of those are in the US. We connect the world through hospitality. And we have over 35 million members in our award-winning loyalty program, The Choice Privileges. In short, what we do, we put heads in beds. And we try to do that through the channel that is most profitable for our franchisors, or for our franchisees. We have spent and invested millions and millions of dollars into technology and to add to drive book direct campaigns and drive bookings through our website. Technology and innovation is at the core of our business. It's, it's been since ever we started in 1941. And actually, in 2009, we launched our first mobile app for iOS. So we have been investing in mobile for almost a decade. And this is the European website on mobile. This is the European website on mobile. I'm not kidding you. This is the mobile website for Europe. So it's clear that those millions of dollars invested over a decade has not been allocated to my region. So if you guys are anything like me, you have one question in your head right now. And that is why on earth is that woman on that stage talking about mobile and driving bookings if that is what she has accomplished when it comes to mobile experience in the e-commerce space. So I'm not here to tell you about best practices or to brag about how great my company is or how much we actually invested in digital. I'm here to share with you the story about how we have taken on the challenge to drive mobile bookings when we don't even have the foundation in place? How do we compensate 
the mobile experience when it looks like that. It all starts with curiosity and with my second favorite word, which is what? I joined Choice Tells Europe two and a half years ago. Not only did I move to London, I also moved 10 years back in time. Because that's what it feels like. When you start working for, for an entity that has this low focus on mobile. The first thing we looked at is how we're going to be able to compensate for this. What can we do to actually drive bookings via mobile? And we realized quickly that we need to become a travel partner for our customers. That was our only way. We could not be the strongest e-commerce site. That ship has sailed. We're arriving 10 years late to the party. But there was something we could do. Become a travel partner for our customers. And we wanted to develop that digital experience based on the customer behavior, the needs, and the device usage. And we needed to do that across digital touch points, platforms, and channels. This has nothing to do with mobile. This is the core of a digital experience. We needed to expand our offering to where our focus was, which is just drive bookings, to actually where customers engaged throughout the entire customer journey. The answer is Travel Top 6. We launched a content marketing platform it's a standalone brand, powered by Choice Hotels Europe. It's designed to inspire people to travel to destinations where we have hotels. Imagine the pushback I got when I said, I'm going to launch a new brand here. I'm not going to talk about our products, our hotels, our brand. I'm actually going to launch something and focus all our investments in a new brand, a new platform. So how did we do this? How did the Travel Top 6 site and content marketing became, become the core of driving online sales? Well, of course, we needed to look at the digital ecosystem and we needed to base that all around the customer journey. How many models of the customer journey have you come across in the last like five years? One, two, five? I think that every time I open my browser, I get a new this is the way to map the customer journey. I uh, looked for inspiration uh, with one company. I think you've heard of it. It's called Google. I do believe they know one thing or another about how we interact with content and how our journeys look like. And they have designed a model that talks about the micro moments of travel. So we decided to take that journey and make that ours. It's the dreaming moments of travel. When people want to get away. What we do is we inspire them to travel to destinations where we have hotels. It's the planning moment of the journey where we aim to help people to find the right place to stay or to experience the destination of their choice. It's the booking moment. When I want it to be flawless, smooth, and fast, I have decided where I want to book, and I want to book the cheapest price possible. And it's the most important part of your stay, the experiencing moment of travel. The pre, during, and post visiting the destination. Our role here is to make sure that our guests get the most out of their stay. And of course, those are the moments. But where do people get their inspiration? Where do they turn to to plan their next trip? Where do they book? And how can we help them in the experiencing phase? Well, of course, we needed to map out all those digital touch points. The dreaming, planning, booking, and experiencing. And then we looked at what platforms and where are people actually seeking that inspiration? Last time I checked, no one went to choicehotels.com to get inspiration. Even though we as a brand would like to think so, because we're the center of the universe, right? 
but they don't. They go to, well, surprisingly, social. That's where they get their inspiration today. Where do they plan? Well, it's not on the choicetest.com, it's actually on other platforms. So we need to look where do our customers engage and how can we tap into that conversation? There are a gazillion touch points. These are the ones that we identified as the most important. I can't be present, relevant, and kick ass on all these touch points. I need to pick a few. So that's what we did. So how do we use the travel top six and how do we tie this all together? Well, much like in distribution, we have our CRS, which is the core of how we distribute hotel rooms. The travel top six is the core of how we distribute content. It's a hub where we host all the bespoke content about destinations where we have hotels, and that we use to distribute this across multiple touch points and channels, all aiming to drive the traffic back to the content hub, to the travel top six, to increase the authority of that site and over time increase value in search engines. So this is what it looks like when we look at one example of the child's dreaming, planning, booking, and experiencing, where travel top six content is distributed across social channels like Instagram or Facebook to spark interest or aid in the planning. When people then go to our platform, of course, we are able to retarget them with an ad or with another piece of content that might be relevant depending on where they are in the customer journey. And once they've decided to book, we can actually take the recommendations that are on site and help them in the pre-arrival emails or on a Wi-Fi splash page when they chose to go to one of our hotels. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, I have a fancy video to show you what this looks like. That's how the content marketing hub and Travel Top 6 actually uh, plays a role in inspiring and helping people in their journey to plan their next trip. I'm not the only one full of questions. And when I pitched this to uh, the executive board, I realized there's another question that is very, very relevant. And I'm considering adapting that as my third favorite word. That's so what? Because we can talk about this all we want, and I can make these fancy videos, and I can showcase this, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna get the question from my boss and the people that actually need to invest in this, so what? We've been running this program for a year now, um, and we said let's invest one year, and let's see if there is a so what to it. So what is the Travel Top 6 and this whole approach to, to driving direct bookings via content marketing actually given us? Well. First of all, it has given us a move from where we, we used to push book, book, book all along, right? We added no value in the dreaming, planning, and experiencing phase. We have this very fancy website, and we just tried to force people to book with us. Right now, we have a mobile experience that is based on the customer's need. 
what kind of content do they want in the dreaming phase, the planning, the booking, and the experiencing phase. So now we're not trying to push the same message across the entire journey. We're actually adapting it. And what do you know? We are present on mobile. That's good, because almost 75% of the traffic to the Travel Top 6 site actually comes from a mobile device. So does this replace the e-commerce site? No, it still looks like shit. But it's compensating. I'm adding value. And I'm getting people to actually come back. Heading up Europe, um, 13 countries, a couple of languages to deal with. The biggest thing for me was so I could use this vehicle to identify intent of purchase and inspire people to travel across the different countries. Marketing has no geographical borders. And even though the vast majority of our business is domestic, we can actually see that based on how people interact with the content, we can see that, oh, we can actually use this and drive business from one market to another. In 12 months, the second most read article regarding France was, re was read in English. That's non-domestic travelers. Huge opportunity for us to drive international business to our properties. But the most important question, of course, in the so what is, did we put more heads in beds? Yes, we did. In 12 months, without replatforming our e-commerce site, we increased direct online bookings with 35%. And that's without launching one single book direct price campaign in the region. So you guys might be all set. Have your house in order, have the foundations worked out. But if you don't, or if you move into a company, if you're like me, kind of a sucker for punishment, and go for these mission impossibles, I want to leave you with three pieces of advice. First one is base your strategy on the customer need, behavior, and device usage. Not on your business needs and on your product or your brand. Second, identify the platforms where your customers are spending their time and then tap into that conversation. And I'm saying tap into it. Don't interrupt it. Don't try to change their behavior. Don't think that they will come to you. You need to come to them. And you need to add value in exchange for their attention. And the final point, Prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. Again, rather be amazing at something than be mediocre at everything. There's so much that you can do. Get your priorities straight. Focus and kick ass at this one thing. And when you're in doubt, because if you are somewhat sane and you go through this, you will be in doubt. Always, always. Ask yourself, why? Thank you so much for listening. <music>